sometimes has emotional issues. Um, uh, you just mentioned something about public input. I'd say kudos to you for having a public input at the beginning and at the end of your agenda here because there are a lot of times when things are covered during the meeting and if you have it just at the front end, then people get frustrated because they can't comment about something they heard or saw. Um, just quickly, some things is that uh, a transparency of agendas. I might have talked to this last time I was here. Uh, right now, when I looked, there was only a four-page copy of the agenda. Uh, there was nothing telling you that you had to call or could call or email a uh, city clerk to request the full packet, which I did. And uh, it's in Dropbox, and we had some problems with that because that process hasn't been worked out. But uh, I was finally able to open those documents and look at uh, what was in there. There's several steps that takes place versus just having one combined PDF on your website. Now I know somebody is going to say, well, it's because of the ADA lawsuits. And I'm saying that, well, then if you had a city hall that was raised, ADA comes along and says that you're going to get sued if you don't put in a ramp for wheelchair users. You do that, but in this case, uh, what I'm seeing is that most of the cities, they're instead completely destroying <coughs> transparency. I mean, when you only have a four-page uh, agenda online, then the information on these planning and zoning issues that you had here and everything else aren't there. And I, to me, as a um, taxpayer advocate, I say that needs to be fixed. I don't think that should be acceptable. Was that your alarm going off? Did I hear an alarm? Or somebody's phone? Okay, I'll keep talking until somebody says stop. <laughs> we don't uh, have a clock here. Yeah. Pardon? We don't have a clock here. Oh, two points then. You get another point for that. Well, we can get a bonus point on that one too. So like, I, we also I think let I you would. Speak, we also let you speak multiple times on the same topic until uh, it gets redundant. So. Oh, okay. Well, I'll probably <laughs> try not to repeat myself. Um, the... Uh, Let's see, there's no fiscal impact value. I think I mentioned that before when I was here. So you have an item agenda, I think it's number six, and it's for approval of a um, spending, and it's in the, uh, that one's not in the consent agenda, no. No, it's under discussion items, but item six is, um, item eight, I'm sorry. Skate park design and build $300,000. You don't have anything in the agenda that you have online, and nobody knows how to ask for the other one that tells you it's 300000 
So the public doesn't really have the information to prepare. Unless it's being hidden somewhere that I don't know about or I missed it and that's possible. I um, do miss stuff. Um, and I'm, that's kind of my crusade this year is transparency. I think because it's ADA thing, a lot of cities are using it as an excuse not to publish the details. Uh, when I looked for the you know, CAFR, your audited financial statements, you still don't have one up for the current most recent year. That means it's 12 months now since that's been done. And I think somebody mentioned before he had problems with uh, something in doing that audit. And I don't understand why. I mean, I, to me, I come from the corporate world where you had them two weeks after the end of the fiscal year. Now, the normal practice is six months or nine months, but 12 months I don't think is acceptable. And I would question how you could say that you're transparent to the council when you don't have that information available. Um, let's see. There's yeah, still no 2018 audited financials. Um, and I think I'll leave it. Okay, the, um, oh, under CRA budgets, because I went there, I was look, trying to find your budgets, your financial audited statements, CAFRs, and uh, CRA budgets. And if you look at your CR page, CRA page, the only thing that's available has a link that you can download it, are the proposed ones, but you can't download... They list some that are adopted, but you can't download them. There's no link. Okay. And I would think that you would have somebody review all of these, look at it from the transparency side point, and do a review and uh, fix those things. With that, thank you, and I'll take it down. Now. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. And we are trying, we're working, and thank you for bringing those attentions, and we will address them. Mark, noted? Noted. And welcome anytime. But we don't have donuts every time. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else like to speak at this time? Okay, with that, we're going to have a proclamation. Um, Scott, I need to clarify this. I can read the English one, or are you going to read the Spanish one? No, that one wouldn't do it justice. <clears throat> don't, so is it okay? Just to, I'm not really sure. I'm, really, honestly, is it okay if I just read it in English? Because I don't yes. do this. Okay. Okay. You just kind of scared me. I was like, this is not going to be the president of Spanish. He was like president of Spanish. Okay. Mayor's proclamation is, the general election of the city of Mineola shall be held at Mineola City Hall, located at 800 North U.S. 27, Mineola, Florida, on Tuesday, November 5th, between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The purpose of this election is to elect a candidate for council seat 5. Two candidates have qualified for seat five. The office holds a two-year term from November 2019 to November 2021. Mayor Pat Kelly, City Mineola, this was advertised. Um, okay, anything else I need to do on that one more? Um, Scott? Okay. <clears throat> One more proclamation is actually the White King Safety Day Proclamation. Whereas according to the, Educate, the American Foundation for the Blind, more than 50,000, sorry, 500, wow, 500,000 Florida citizens have vision difficulties. And whereas persons with disabilities are a great part of the community and have rights to safe and functional uses of streets, highways, sidewalks walkways, public buildings, public facilities, and other public places, places of public accommodation, places of amusement, and other places to which public is invited. And whereas the white cane gives, gives persons who are blind and visually impaired the freedom to travel independently and to participate in the life of their communities, and the white cane serves as a tangible reminder that persons who are blind and visually impaired, are independent, self-reliant, mobile, and capable. Whereas White Cane Law, Florida Statute 316.1301, gives a person who is blind or visually impaired the same rights as all citizens 
to the full and free use of streets, highways, sidewalks, and other public places. Whereas, by joint resolution approved October 6, 1964, and amended on October 15th of each year as the White King Safety Day, we recognize the contributions of Americas, Americans who are blind and have low, low vision. Therefore, I, Pat Kelly, and Mayor of the City of Mineola, do hereby proclaim October 15, 2019, as White Cane Day in the City of Mineola. I further encourage citizens of the great city to be aware of the White Cane Law and their responsibilities in upholding it, to be aware that persons with disabilities have much to offer, and their energy, creativity, and hard work can greatly strengthen the city and our economy, and to recognize that the white cane is an instrument of safety and independence for persons who are blind and visually impaired. Thank you. Step on up. Do we have a sign for permission? Anything you'd like to add? Hi, I'm Chantal Bach with New Vision for Independence. This is Terry Suarez. Thank you for this Thank proclamation. You. Every year, this is a celebration that we have in Florida, in Lake County, Sumter County. It's also known as Blind Americans Equality Day for the same reasons that you just mentioned in the proclamation. So often, people with low vision or blindness are, well, overlooked. We as sighted folks are blind to people who are blind. And uh, the white cane, is more than just a symbol of independence, but it's also a tool for independence. So thank you for Mineola joining the bandwagon. Yeah, this is very exciting. And we have an event down here in Claremont, downtown Claremont, on October 16th. You're all invited to come join us. We'll blindfold you, and I promise you won't get hurt. Knocking on wood. <laughs> I made that promise, and then, of course. <laughs> but uh, it's a fun event to celebrate White Cane Day. It's October 16th at Claremont City Center. Uh, there's just too many hills in Mineola for us to do it here, but it's, it's at 10 a.m. So thank you thank very much. Thank you very much. And we have a proclamation. We've already signed thank it. Thank you. So. Would you like a donut? Is that what those are? That's what those are right oh. there. From the king. Yeah, you know, donut. She smelled I like donuts. donuts. <laughs> I can't thank see you. the donuts, but I smell the donuts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would you like to see the donuts? So you want to do a picture? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, manager's consent agenda. Any questions from the audience on the manager's consent agenda? Um, I would like to, Mark, I'm just going to request something on the agenda. I know it's, it's complicated on some of these, but, you know, with the, with the transparency, on some of these things where it says professional services, law services, can you at least acknowledge if it was budgeted or unbudgeted item? Sure. So that way we can at least know. That way if somebody says, oh, it's budgeted, then when we have financial statements, they can actually look at the budget and see where it was there. That way we, working towards that transparency piece, because I know sometimes it's hard to identify oh, we're going to do lawn maintenance, but we're not really sure what the amount is. We've had those, but we just seem to, we would like to know um, if the budget or unbudgeted, just if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Okay. I know we've talked about all of these, and we have these come up every year for <laughs> budgeted items, so okay. So, anybody? Um, questions? Council, have any questions? No, nope, I'm good. Can I get a motion to approve the manager's consent agenda? I'll make that motion to approve the city manager's consent agenda. Okay. With that said, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 We need a second. We need a oh, second. Oh, second. My bad. I'll do that. I missed a second. My bad. You're off one week, and <laughs> I missed a week. I'm still on Hawaii time, so. Hawaii time. Okay. <laughs> okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion comes. Thank you again for covering last. You're very welcome, sir. Okay, 
Item 8, contract for the skate park um, design build. We've talked about this one multiple times. Um, I'd like to thank Fred for working with this. Um, my understanding was, well, I'm the last change that Tetra Tech was going to be doing the um, engineering on this. Did the contract, does the contract update that? Fred? Yes. The, yeah. the, um, in order to facilitate and make sure there's no gaps and overlaps, uh, Tetra Tech's going to do the that's fine. I just wanted to make sure it was in the contract. I know that was a. Was, I know they, I, there was a point that they just. Yes, sir. Um, again, I did talk to, uh, Payne, um, to Mr. Payne today, and he again complimented the city and, and is excited to move forward with this and complimented staff and said actually Bo's engaged now, so that makes them feel really good that it's really moving forward. So, can I get an approval for the contract, or anybody from the audience want to talk about the contract for the skate park bill design? This is by campaign construction of the same ones that did the one in North Lake County. So, okay. You're good with the contract, Scott? Yes. Okay. With that said? I'll make a motion to approve. I got a motion. And I'll second. Okay, second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, preliminary commercial subdivision plat for the Hills of Mineola. This is a quasi-judicial matter, so if there's anybody that may wish to speak on this matter, I'd ask that they please raise their right hand. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth is so? Please say, I do. I do. And then when you uh, come to the podium, Joyce will give a little uh, staff update. When you come to the podium, please state your name and address for the record. Sign in so we keep the record. Good evening. This is for um, a little uh, shopping center with a large retail and a couple of uh, smaller out parcels. Uh, the actual uh, plans said that it was, it was multiple pods, but it's actually only pod 19. Um, however, the, the Hills have actually done an environmental study for their whole development and they just took a portion of it and, and uh, brought out for this particular subdivision so that you could see specifically how it applied to this subdivision. They have turned in a, a notice from the um, Fish and Wildlife that the t tortoises have been relocated already for this. So um, <coughs> P&Z recommended approval for this. Um, and uh, I believe we have some gentlemen here representing if you have any questions, I'm sure they can answer. Thank you. Okay. For the y'all can come on up. We'll have. You have any questions? You have any that audience want to speak on this? Right now, I'm having technical difficulties. I'm having to flip from my iPad to my phone because for some reason I don't have connectivity. So, to bring my stuff up. Um, with that said. Um, can try to get my stuff up. Any questions, concerns? Vice Mayor? No, thank you. Okay, any, can you give some feedback on what happened to PNZ, please? Yes, sir. All that I have here is that they did approve, and let me find the other paperwork here. You can move on to next council, <coughs> and I'll come back. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Jones? So I'm still having a really hard time grasping that this is only pod 19 when we're looking at what's presented to us, the preliminary plat for area 5, pod 17, 18, and 19. Those three pods are highlighted as part of it. And then when you look further down into uh, the nuts and bolts of it, it looks like there's something going on in a good portion of Somebody want to step up and explain this to Councilwoman Jones, please. I see three. I, th I see three lots. Those, those, all those three lots that were within Pod 19. That's a. I think it's a 26-acre portion. All of that that's at the southeastern intersection of North Hancock and the proposed Citrus Grove Road. It's that area down there. That's, there were. In the packet, there were materials on pods, I think 17 and 18, which is north of the proposed.
proposed Citrus Grove Road, but that is not what is being asked to be approved as a part of the preliminary plan this evening. Is that correct? That's correct. On the other side, yeah. So in, in a sense, you have probably more information than you need, but I think it was better. I think it was put in there for the context, so to help to understand. There's also the okay. concept plan you'll that. see in there for the hills, and you'll see this is consistent with that. So. I see it now. Yeah. Okay, because I was kind of, when I was, kind of, when I was going through it, I'm like, I did the same thing. thing. Yes. We're, we're looking yeah. at it, and why do, we have, why do we have Camp Lake? And it's really hard to look at on a desktop where you can't. Yeah, because I was getting confused on the... I can't put pieces of it. Why is that even here? Okay. Okay. So I'll be quiet now. Are you good? Yeah. Are you quiet now? No, I'm, I'm good. Good. Okay. Mr. Saunders? No. No questions? Pam? Yeah, we're good. How are you? That's it. Okay. With that said, what do we need, Scott? First, we just need a uh, motion. Or another is that staff has met with the applicant and has worked out this is a preliminary <coughs> plat, so it'll be coming back for a final plat, at which okay. time all the easements and everything will be presented. So, okay. uh, but if you're inclined, we just need a motion to approve. Okay. Unless, there's any can, can, unless there's any additional, unless there's any additional comment. Okay, Sorry. Um, in the future, can we just break out that one? Because that really, and again, when we get these packages, you know, we've got these big big things and you're looking at them on a desktop and it's very hard to, it's actually easier on the iPad to look at it than on a, but, um, but yeah, if we could just keep each item individual in the future, that'd be awesome. That's all I got. What am I going to try to get me here? going on my laptop. Thank you. Oh, you want to look at mine? No, I'm good. I've already looked at it. I laid it before, but that's why I was like, I was kind of confused on the same thing you had, where I was like, why do I have all this when we're looking at just one little piece? So, yeah, it was fine. Okay. So thank you for bringing that up. Okay, so you need a motion for the preliminary plot? Yes. Can I get a motion to accept the preliminary plot? I'll make that motion to accept for a preliminary plot. Okay. Can I get a second? I'll second. Got a first and a second. Any further discussion? With that said, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Do we know who's going in that plot? Is it? No. No, no, no. Can we make it public record? No. <laughs> no. Okay. There was no pun intended there, right? Never hurts to ask. I'm not saying anything. Okay. So, um, okay. <laughs> Annexation and rezoning of Shamrock, oh, is that what we're at? Yeah, Shamrock uh, Automotive Property. Uh, basically, this is many old property that's now in the city, so it'd be nice to have it in the city if we own it. Yes, Ordinance 2019-10 on second reading and ordinance of the City Council of the City of Mineola, Florida, amending the boundaries of the City of Mineola in accordance with the procedure set forth in Section 171.044. Florida statute to include within the city limits approximately 2.67 acres of property located at 16409 North U.S. Highway 27 in Lake County, Florida, rezoning the property from Lake County Planned Commercial to Public Facilities Institutional within the city of Mineola, providing for conditions and contingencies, providing for severability, providing for effective date. This is a quasi-judicial matter as well. If there's anybody, Joyce, you've already sworn once. If there's anybody else that wishes to speak, if not, we'll... Remain sworn in. This is uh, our piece of property that we've just purchased for our public works building, <coughs> and um, it was just never annexed into the city. So, of course, since it's our property, we'd like to have it as a part of our city. Okay. With that said, any other ones want to speak on this? Bring it back to council for discussion or a motion? I'll make a motion for uh, approval for ordinance 2019 10. Annexation and rezoning of Shamrock Automotive Property. I have a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. First and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. Small, small scale comp plan amendment. Shamrock Automotive. First reading. Yes, this is the Companion Comprehensive Plan Amendment, Ordinance 2019-11 on first reading, in ordinance of the City Council of the City of Minneapolis, Florida, providing for a comprehensive plan amendment amending the land use designation from urban low density 
on the Lake County Comprehensive Plan to institutional and the future land use map of the City of Minneapolis Comprehensive Plan for approximately 2.67 acres of property located at 16409 North Highway 27, providing for conditions and contingencies, directing the City Clerk to transmit the amendment to the appropriate governmental agencies pursuant to Chapter 163 Florida Statutes, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. This was my error. This should have been at the last meeting, but we'll just have the joy go on a little longer by having first reading this evening. Okay. Anybody in the audience want to speak on this? We'll have this back next meeting. Scott? Yes. Yes. We can bring this. Thank you very much. Any comments? From... Nope. None. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> now it's cold. Item, item 13, private provider inspections and plan review. Ordinance 2019-09 on first reading in ordinance of the City Council of the City of Manila, Florida, amending section 98 of the City of Manila Land Development Regulation, specifically adding 98-15 to address the use of private providers for plan review and building inspection services, establishing permit fees and administrative fee applicable to the applications for which a private provider is utilized, repealing conflicting ordinances, providing a savings clause, and providing for an effective date. This More is keeping... I was just going to say this is first reading. There's no vote, vote this evening. Okay. Any comments? Anybody from the audience? With that said, we'll move on to item 14. Oh. Oh. Second, second reading on this matter probably won't be until the November 12th meeting, okay. just to give uh, some times to uh, evaluate the appropriate fees to charge. And for those of you who are wondering, this uh, statutory change was in Statute 553, was done actually a few years back. They've tinkered with it in recent years, though. Essentially, it allows builders, developers to use private inspection services. Um, they have that right. Uh, we, and not, we're just not within our discretion. And But if we haven't really had a need to have this in place because we didn't have anybody that wanted to do it, there have been requests to do this recently, and so the need to put some procedures in place. The, Ordinance largely tracks the statute, um, but also um, there's some optional things in the statute that it allows us to do. So. Okay. Anything else? Okay, bringing back to item 14, appointment of planning and zoning commission. Looking at you, Pam. Mark. Okay. Uh, at the last Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, uh, Commissioner Dave Yeager uh, resigned September 9, 2019. His term was set to expire January 5th, 2021. Uh, currently, we have Daniel Smith as the uh, alternate. Our second alternate that was chosen when we uh, sought applications did not complete the process. So uh, we just have the one alternate this time. Um, some of the options were to appoint Daniel Smith to fill the unexpired term, um, accept applications uh, for the position, open it back up, uh, or reduce you know the commission from uh, seven to five members. So those, those are kind of the choices that we we, we could think of for you guys to consider. Uh, our code requires five members, but you can go as many as seven, which is what we've had in recent recent years. I keep my fingers up. I like to keep so my recommendation would keep keep it at seven. Um, have Daniel fill uh, Dave's spot and open it up for two alternate applications. No, to all, excuse me, open it up with applications for those two alternates. That would be m my recommendation. Yeah, I, su I support that. I think it's the more eyes on this stuff, the better. You know, and then you have some of the out. Yeah, mm -hmm. The seven works good. It's, I believe, sad to see David Gale, who's a great asset, too. Mm -hmm. He was kind of caught off guard when it happened. Um, he brought a lot of knowledge. So to me as well, yeah. Hopefully, um, he'll still be available for consultation purposes, um, especially. Why don't we make him our historian? <laughs> yeah. So, we'll figure something out for him, but I think um, he's an asset to Mineola. I think you know, he loves the city. Um, I would like to figure something out, how he can actually still help. I know me, he's always helped help, help me out on things, and even though we've been on opposite sides, He's, you know, we've had our issues this way, but he's also been a big supporter of, of me and helping me out um, in explaining things. So, um, yeah, it's kind of caught me off guard um, when, I, when I got it. So I agree with Daniel. I think Daniel would be a great
great asset. He's added value in the past. He's done mm -hmm. his time, and I think it's the right thing to do. And let people know that that's the process. Thank you. Um, so, do we need a motion to? Anyone in the audience? Anybody in the audience? Okay. There you go. <laughs> so, can I get a motion? Oh, sure. Probably an easier to walk around the other way. Um, <laughs> just, yeah, just, yeah, just saying. Yeah. Paul Jack, the Long 625 Arbor Point Avenue. Um, about the Planning and Zoning Committee. Uh, you know, I've been there since 2013. Uh, I love coming here. I love doing what we do. I love being part of the city. Um, and uh, you know, we have a great staff. Everybody does their job well. Um, but, but in my opinion, I think that we should have all the information available to us that the board gets. Because there was Fonda's Ridge that had a, uh, a fire plan review that wasn't in our packet. Can I ask a quick, quick question? I don't mean to interrupt you. Does this have anything to do with item 14? This has to do with planning and zoning, right? No, 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 but it had to do with as far as what we were discussing with... I think she wants to get through 14 and then we can... And then we can... Yeah, open. we can, we can hit it finish right now. Right, okay. that's what so I don't go anywhere. Get at. Yeah, don't so go anyplace. So at least we can make a motion, close that chapter, and then go to the next okay. where you're at, if you don't mind. No. Nope. Thank okay. you, sir. We got a motion. We got a second. Conversation. Conversation. I, I am open to the idea of um, allowing business owners within Mineola to be part of PNZ as well because they do have a stake in what happens in the city mm -hmm. and you know unfortunately they can't vote they there's there's a lot of things that they can't do but they, they could be part of the process and and they could probably um, bring in a different perspective and point of view as well so how many how many do you recommend Business owners well, if we've got seven, like maybe one business owner, or, okay. you know. We could start off with one, but I don't want to bump anybody off P and Z. Yeah, and no. Daniel. I'm just saying. I think well, we're you're getting ready on the dirt floor the next time when we're looking for an alternate opening up to. Well, maybe a, a opening up the alternate to include business yeah. owners, all the business then owners. We have to do so. He's looking at the stack. Right now. Um, so <laughs> he's looking at the book. <laughs> you can give one of somebody look at that, Scott. If you can just. Qualified electors, Scott. It's qualified electors. Yeah, as I was going to say, I was wondering if it was in the charter. I think we'd actually have to amend our charter because it's required to be an elector or a resident presently okay. of the city. So Good it charter. certainly could be done. But we'll save that for a charter amendment. Yes, and I think given the time we are, well, it would have to be for perhaps for the, if you wanted, we could bring back an ordinance in the future. That right, well, be, just when we, do, when we address charters next year, we'll just remember to bring perfect. that back as a charter. <laughs> but right now, we'll just go forward with the resident, but in the future, we need to include that as a charter amendment. Yep. Okay. Joe, any questions, concerns? No, that's fine. Okay. Got to go on the ballot. Yes. Right, mm -hmm. but right now we're talking about the Daniel piece. We go with Daniel. Yeah, and Daniel's attended most of the meetings, and he served yeah. as an alternate. Uh, he served as a regular member when uh, one of them was absent, so he's done a good job there. Yeah. Okay. Let's get to it. Got the first. Got I'll it. make that motion. I got a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. Got a second. Any further discussion? Good job. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Okay, Paul. Thank you. Now back to where you were. You didn't get all, you're just more, you want PNC to get all the information. Yeah, yeah, but I also agree with what Joe said because I, I think that people should vote, that the residents should vote for something like that. I don't think that's something that you all should just do on your own. They have to. They have to. The residents it's, have to vote. It's yeah. a charter amendment. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, Fonda's Ridge, um, you know, we didn't have the fire plans ex ex uh, examiner's um, review. Uh, for that, and if I would have seen that, uh, I would definitely have voted no. Um, but then I saw it. Um, actually, I came here the next day to tell you all that. Uh, I'm, hey, listen, I'm, you know, I made a mistake, and this is what the code says. This is what fire code says. Um, and then a week later, or two weeks later, when when you had your meeting for Fonda's Ridge, then I saw that online. And the same codes that I uh, quoted were the same co codes that uh, 
Captain Missy to quote it in her, in her report. So, um, you know, I'm saying that to say that we should have that information with planning and zoning because if we don't have it, how do we know for sure that we, you know, we should have all the information is what mm -hmm. I'm saying, just like you have all the information. That's my input. Um, with that said, Vice Mayor, when you're on PNZ, if the board does not feel comfortable with the um, information that they've received, or they mm -hmm. feel that it's incomplete, and your board as a whole feel that they're going to kind of just push it and table it to the next meeting. Oh, absolutely. I have, I have no issue with. And I don't think they have an issue with let, tabling things you know, either. Please don't let, please don't let the developers, from our aspect, just don't let the developers push you so that, you know, poor planning on their part does not criticize, no pun intended, a fire drill on our part. Right. So if, if they need more time to give them the information, and if you don't feel like you have all the information, um, please. Well, well, we trust the planner to, to give us all the information. And, and so, and that's what we basically go by. Right. You know, we ask our questions, but had I seen that, it would have been a totally different story for me. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? We good on everything? Anybody in the public want to make final comments on anything? You're going to fully utilize the time. <laughs> I just want to donut. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have uh, been creating a list of transparency issues for all the cities, and so you're one of the first guinea pigs. One of the things is that on your online system where I went into the folder system in Dropbox, there were some documents you could not download or print. Uh, there are contracts uh, in a couple of in three instances, and I'm surprised at that. Uh, the, uh, so, and I know you have problems with the website, so you might look at that because that, that Dropbox process, you know, it's much easier if you have it all in one long PDF that you can just download. Um, the uh, <clears throat> I'd like to re-emphasize something that I talked about at an earlier visit was uh, making videos. Again, that's part of my transparency pitch. Uh, I don't think ADA should be used as a reason uh, to not do videos. I think it ought to be funded by every city, and I'm going to be pushing that this year. Um, the city of Eustis has it. They even do it for planning and zoning. Uh, Leesburg does it. Um, in Mount Dora, the mayor, and the recent... Uh, in a candidate forum, he said that uh, they're going back to it. They had to stop it because of all this ADA nonsense. And uh, so they're, <clears throat> they're going to go back uh, and they're going to come up with it. And uh, Tavares has said it would cost them $70,000 to do uh, videos now under the ADA requirements. And uh, the way I look at it is when you have a budget, in their case, uh, they're hitting uh, tens of millions of dollars, you too and that I would think that you still spend the money to have a video with captions as required because nobody seems to be willing to stand up to the ADA lawsuits that are going on. Uh, even some private companies have been sued and they've lost it going up in the court system. Um, <clears throat> the <coughs> uh, same for video of planning and zoning. To me, almost that's almost more important to have videos of that. Um, and I was looking, I couldn't find an elections page. You have some people that are running for office, and yet there was no elections page. I would suggest that you look at the one that uh, Mount Dora has, because they have everything. They put all their documents online, and so that when you, uh, if you want to look at the contributions for a candidate, you can go look right there. You don't have to go into, like, I'm going to have to do tomorrow, and I've actually done here is go into the office, get the file folder and sit there and go through all the individual folders and then also look at things because as every city clerk will tell me that they do not check what they're given and so you find math errors, you find them leaving out uh, email, not emails, but uh, employer names and all sorts of things. Uh, and let's see. First readings, uh, you allowed discussion on that. That's great. City of Tavares does not, will not let anybody, people show up, and they can't talk at all, so I commend you for doing that. And um, let's see. 
there was something else in the financials, but I'll get to it. And I'll, I'll send Mark a, a list of these as I put them together. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Anybody else? Um, and just for informational purposes, yes, we there is a new South Lake TV that's coming on in, online. It's actually online now. Um, they are working. They have approached us just like you. We we welcome the media to show up and film. Um, they showed an interest to wanting to start live streaming our meetings and keeping video records. They are a third party. Um, but if anybody else would like to do that, um, I'm not sure. I thought they were supposed to be here tonight. Um, I'm not sure what happened. We'll find out. But we I did meet with them. Um, it's southlake.tv. It's yeah, website. So I'm looking forward to that. I think that be the next step we have in transparency for the city um, and letting people see who can't make it in or getting home. Um, we told me we get home now faster since we have the new Fosgate, the new educational way, um, but get here and be able to see it. So thank you very much. Mark. Yeah, uh, real quickly, um, Mary, Mary Jane did contact the uh, acting group that wished to uh, adopt the community garden, and she's waiting. She did speak with the individual that. Uh, is leading that effort, and she's waiting to hear back. Uh, they did speak, but they had to go check on some things, and they're going to call us back. Thanks. And that's all. Thank you. Okay. Anything for more? Um, as far as safe night out, uh, are we going to be getting any um, updates on meetings or anything? Yes, I believe they're they're starting meetings Wednesdays at ten o'clock. I think is what they're what they're meeting at now. Okay. Most days at 10, every week. And at trail, still at Trailhead Park? They're going to, uh, yes, we looked at moving it to the MAC this year, and that was uh, the plan. Mm -hmm. But uh, for some unforeseen issues, they're going to go ahead and have it at Trailhead Park one more year. But they do look to have it at the MAC uh, next year. So starting October 9th is your first meeting? Uh, I'm not sure. They've had, a, they've had one or two. Yeah, I haven't. What is it? I think it's like the third meeting. I haven't been to them. But. Okay. <coughs> yeah. mm, interesting. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Right. Any? Um, yeah, but I lost it. Okay. Don't forget uh, Kelly Price. Okay. Huh? Kelly Price. We did. Oh, I missed that. Sorry about that. Okay. Joe, anything? Nothing. Um, I will. Wait for my regular comments. Okay, Scott. Independent attorney. Yeah, thank you, sir. Attorney. Independent attorney. Anything for the attorney? Okay. Yeah. I've got nothing this evening. Thank you. I know it's not our thing, but hopefully we can do something about it once and for all. I was coming in tonight, and I was seeing people on the new education way, which was nice. And as I was turning behind the Dollar General to go around Quail Valley to come into the meeting, I'm driving in, pulling it into the parking lot, and I see that left turn lane is backed up past Mineola City Hall. Would that be why you had to ride in? Well, yeah, that's, yeah. you know, that's why every, well, that's why a lot of people do that. The majority of people do that. And I know it's not, you know, it's a U.S. highway and it's not under our jurisdiction, but... I just think we need to be the squeakiest wheel because that's just ridiculous. You know, it shouldn't be backed up a half a mile, a left turn lane at mm -hmm. five o'clock or six six thirty. Yeah, the uh, the growth in uh, Groveland and, and also in Incorporated Lake County certainly contributed to a lot more uh, trips per day on Lake Mineola Shores. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably for the last five years, we make an annual request to. I know. Uh, extend the turn lane and or extend the uh, traffic signal time. But uh, the one thing we were able to uh, get accomplished is they made the turn signal uh, change twice per cycle instead of mm -hmm. once. Mm -hmm. uh, but they did not, uh, traffic engineers did not agree, uh, would not agree to extend the, the green arrow time. Um, but we, we continue to make that request each year. 
Are you talking about the Lake Mineola Shores making a right on 27? No, I'll take left no, on I, know, I know yours, but were you speaking about that as well? We make both. Yeah, that's what I thought you were speaking about, the second part, because that is, is huge. Um, coming from Groveland, going to 27 to make a right, uh, you've got to wait, because if you've got someone that's going to be crossing over 27, you're stuck. And what's happening is now people are making a right, as if they were going to go to the gas station or to City Hall to cut all that traffic and then get onto 27. Yeah, we, we also, for that, for that direction, we also make an annual request of yeah. uh, Lake County to put it on their, on their project. I, I know those two have definitely been requested several times. I just don't know how we can push it a little bit more. But yeah. I, I agree completely. If you can set up a meeting with Lake County, because like we need to get a couple of these out there. I know in today's meeting, Commissioner Parks reached out and said, hey, if there's anything you need, it's, like, it's time to put a list on a couple well, of these yeah. things. Um, anything, Joe? So, with that said, I've already talked to the lieutenant, but I'm just going to vocally do this. In my conversation with Lake County, um, this is what I um, kind of understand. The lieutenant kind of grounded me on why this could happen. It's still, this need to get from it, it's going to get fixed. Um, I have the pictures, I'm not going to show them to you, but you just visualize. If you go down Lakeshore Drive, go down Lake Mineola, the speed limit is 40 miles an hour. When you pass Park Ridge, there's one sign that says 35 miles an hour because there's a driveway. Mm -hmm. um, I drove down the new Citrus Grove Road today. Mm -hmm. Four Citrus lanes, Shore. no, the new Citrus okay. Grove. Mm -hmm. Four lanes, divided highway. No houses, no nothing, speed limit 35. So I'm like for the county to explain, or the traffic engineers who are telling us that we don't need to turn lane, justifying a speed limit of 40 miles an hour on a two lane road with, with houses, no curbs, no, no curbs, lines. no curbs, no gutters, driveways, and then you have a perfectly designed road at 35. So we got some inconsistencies here. I um, mean, that just makes people question the intellect of the side of the road. <laughs> yes, so exactly it. So um, that's be another one, but address that with them. So or if you want to have the conversation with them, I'll be happy to. Or if you want to just meet with Commissioner Parks, whatever, we'll figure something out. Okay. okay. Um, a couple things that came up that. Um, we've had some emails about. I talked to um, Mr. Zagami today, who's talking about doing it in some type of an academy, child school um, here in Mineola. He had requested, which is one of those things that you're aha, he would like to, uh, for us to rename Division Street to mm -hmm. something else besides Division Street, which is probably not a good name for a school. Um, he has a good point. It's just one of those streets that hasn't really been used. I told him I would bring it to council. I personally don't have an issue with it. It's just something never, again, you we brought it, you read it, you're it. Yeah. like, light bulb comes on. We don't know until on. it's actually brought to our attention. Um, I just want to know if there's any problems with if he has any concerns with renaming a division that doesn't impact any major businesses. There's a, I think a storage unit building that will have to get its name changed, but um, he did ask how to do it. I told him to reach out to Mark um, for some information because Mark did a phenomenal thing on Fosgate. So, um, he probably needs to work on a little leg work, but we can't do it for him because it's going to be mm -hmm. us and Claremont. But I just wanted to make sure that we have the everybody on council is fine with that. City Line Road. Good with that. Yeah, that's probably a better name than. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that is really weird. But um, so we have that. Yeah, but um, when that was named, nobody thought like that. Yeah. Um, Taste of South Lake on the November seventh. Mm -hmm. I got. They asked me to be a judge on it. Mm -hmm. um, I called them and said, I'm not really sure because I have school that night, um, because I'm teaching that night. But I told them that there was somebody from council who would be there as a judge, mm -hmm. um, somebody from the city. Any of y'all interested in being the judge? No. I, does, I will be there regardless. You want to so judge? It's, it's up to you. can ask Joe. Joe's up for re-election, so if you'd like to, you to you judge and judge? participate. No. No. Okay. okay. You want to judge? Hey, I judge, judge, I, I judge. I judge your barbecue. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, you judged a chili. 
Okay. Yeah. The bar yeah. <laughs> The chili he judged, and yeah. that was I have school on that Thursday, and I know I do, but okay. um, we'll figure it out later. But if yeah. something happens, I'm just, it's amazing just we have something. Let me know. I don't know something to cover, I didn't know who it was going to be. Um, and that's pretty much it. That was, that was it. I just to make sure it's covered. Um, with that said, any other comments? We're all good. Sure. Oh, and I want to, we did open up the Fosky entry mm -hmm. today. Education. Educate Wait. Um, I want to thank Joe for everything he did. That was kind of his thought. How does it feel to actually have a thought, work for it for years, and it actually, government works slow though, doesn't it? Well, we needed the rule. Exactly. And thanks for identifying that and bringing it up and working with it long before Armour was even part of the project. So, um, thank you. He was there. He got to cut it. Mm -hmm. um, it's getting used heavily, um, I saw today. So, it's going to be interesting the traffic flow. Eventually, how long will we go before trucks will stop coming through Mineola in Claremont and they're going to start doing the 429 because there's so many red lights on 27. You know, so we will see. Huh? I wasn't prepared for that. The red light? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can get up some speed between East Washington and Little Anthony's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, I think that is extra the traffic still? light, <laughs> that extra traffic light is going to exacerbate the problem we have here at this traffic light. I was, when they were talking about that, I'm like wondering, so what's going to happen? Or, or will it do that? It's one of those things that you don't really know. You, you sit there, the traffic engineers come with all these brilliant ideas, and then reality sets in, and people start making cuts and stuff like that. But with that said, are they cutting off where it forks off onto Main Street? Is that going to be just a right-hand turn? It's closed right now. Are they redoing that, or is it just going to be a stop and a right? Or are, you gonna, are they opening that gap? On Washington? No, on t when you come down at the new intersection. Oh, okay. On to Main Street, you mean? Yeah. On to Main. No, what's, what's there is there. Right. No, point. it's right now it's coned off. Yeah. Is it going to come uncombed off and it's going to go back to uh, with well, the yield sign? Fred, can you help us? Yeah, that's going to take that, that ramp on to Main Street. Yeah. So it's going to be only a right, it would be a red light, right hand turn on to Main Street. That's it. So no straight ramp. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that was more like a zoom. Yeah. yeah, that stop sign yeah. there too. So no, okay. I do have a question actually. Um, my husband had brought it up when the um, education way was being constructed, and it was you know it, we had at the uh, corner of Grassy Lake and Grassy Lake where it was just like the right hand turn, and there was the yellow sign that says 10 miles an hour because there's a sharp right hand turn. Right. Has that sign been removed? Can we make sure that that sign gets removed? Because now it's just an intersection. It's not a sharp turn. It should have been. If it's not, we'll, we'll try and get it done. I, I haven't been that way. No. I haven't been there on that way. But I know a couple weeks ago, and every time we drove by it, you brought it up. I'm like, oh. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a great ride. It was, I was just amazed by the amount of cars that actually were just traveling. I traveled on a couple times a day and passed it a couple times and just people making left and rights and all that. So hopefully that will alleviate. We'll see a change. Um, with the traffic going through Old Mineola. Yeah, I'm interested to see how the traffic's going to be on my street. Yeah, in Washington. Like, I was, I'm, I can't, you kind of sit there and think of, if you take the Ardmore and the Reserve, and I always put public as a person, it's like, okay, when they go to the grocery store, how do they go? Do they go through Old Mineola, or do they go all the way down to Hancock and cut down 15, cut through your neighborhood? What do they do? So, it'll be interesting in the next couple weeks. We'll see reality will set in. But then, um, and Citrus Grove Road should be opened in. This month, hopefully, Should be this month. Hopefully, mm -hmm. in the month, it, it looks clean. It's nice. They were, it's all striped up and everything. So looks good. Yeah. So, okay. With that said, can I get a motion for adjournment? Aye. Got a motion. Can I get a second? That was a second. Marcella, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Oh.